Hey guys, welcome to uh, Cast of Salt, episode 49. Bit of a different environment in this one. We are in my spare bedroom. So back to back hey. to living it rough. Hey, 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 mate. It's 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 your streaming lab. Streaming hey. lab. There, there you go. That's what we're calling it now. Streaming lab. It's the lair. We need to get a better name for it because I have the sex dungeon. What are we going to call Suggest this one? Suggest names for Adam's streaming Jesus, lair no, slash sex dungeon like in the already. comments below. Hey, look, I, like I said, we've all referred to my lounge room as the sex dungeon. Actually, it, no, is... I've referred to it as the Dank Dungeon. <laughs> well, it's been all of them at the same <laughs> time. Sweet, dank sex. So, Adam, and what's up with you? Anyway, yeah, thank you for joining us um, on this podcast. You know, very, very professional looking. Um, we, uh, My name is Adam, and I'm joined by Ryan. Yo! And Ben. Yo. So, um, yeah, so we're talking about some hot gaming news. But first of all, how's everyone's week been? Good. Ryan? I haven't been on the podcast in a while. I know, you've been absent. I, I have been flat action. out. I have been flat out. Uh, like a lizard drinking? Well, I wish. Um, no, I've been I've been doing renos still. Mm. Um, I'm pretty much moved into my house now. Nice. So can you stop calling them renos? It sounds like a B-grade thing from the ABCs. Tonight on <laughs> renos. Well, it's funny you say that because I've also been watching Netflix and one of the shows I've been watching has been Reno My Reno. Which is probably where I picked up saying Renos. Ah, uh, Go back in Renos. Renos, my We got, we mate. got the Renos. We got to do the feast to Renos. I would say there's a hole in the wall because I punched it. Fuck. Anyway. Fuck it. You're all weird. You're all weird. But hey, yeah, um, you... other than that, that's pretty much been my focus. Been watching some weird and wonderful Netflix stuff. Um, started watching I Am a Killer, actually, on Netflix. Cool. Are you that's... a killer? I am not a killer. Oh. Um, but the people on the show are. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's kind of like a documentary series where they they chat with like people on death row in America, um, and then chat with all the uh, what are they called um, like prosecution and and all like, the the defense lawyer and like any family and friends yeah, that are willing yeah. to, to chat. That um, sounds like it's making light of a terrible industry. It's not really. Well, it kind of because I, I, I saw the first episode of this too, and it kind of highlights like. Quite often, like stories that prisoners, like people, will tell about these things, and they'll kind of like they'll find out later, like, oh, this person clearly did, and they're just like trying to lie. They're lying, like, or they're making their story sound better so they can, you know, get in front of a camera. Well, that's it. Like, but, but also, like, there's even an example that I saw in the first episode where it's just like, even if this dude is clearly a bad a dude, bad dude, a violent dude. Uh, like he's been in prison since he was 17 for stealing a stereo system and he's never gotten out of prison. He's in his like fifties or something. So Christ. At, yeah. No matter, like no matter how you cut that, you're like, well, obviously his violent tendencies yeah. are somehow like that at some point the system has to be responsible for that as well. Yeah. So it's kind of like the, yeah, the, 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 it's, I wouldn't say it's an objective view, but I would definitely say yeah. that they try and present a lot of differing opinions around that particular situation, yeah, right? for sure. So, and the, the thing is as well, they start off with interviewing, um, uh, like, the killer, right? And they, they get that person's perspective. Yeah. Um, and they, and they, might, they, they might spin a tale, right? Um, and the thing is, I, I found myself actually a couple of times, like, I caught, it's like, oh, okay, that sounds, like, kind of weird. But then you actually, like, 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 they make it out that they're kind of a victim of their own circumstance a little bit, and they say, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. Like, well, well, that's the thing. Like, yeah. they're like, they're like, "Yeah, you I'm, did yeah. break into someone's house." Yeah, mm. well, that's the thing. Like, it's like, possibly yeah. murdered everyone. Well, that's that, yeah. and that's the thing. They're like, "Yeah, like I did this, I did that. Yeah, I admit it. I'm, I know I'm guilty. All that sort of stuff, right?" And you go, "Okay, I can kind of see where he's, you know, he's a bad person, but I can kind of see where he's coming from." And then you talk to, and they talk to like, like, the, like his defense lawyer and like. All this sort of stuff, and they're just like, and, and like the prosecution, and they're just that's like, fucking crazy. The yeah. guy's crazy. He's crazy. He's spinning a tale. Um, obviously, there are there is some truth to that because the yeah. best lies uh, have hints of truth in them. And but yeah, the, the fact is, he went there and like cold blooded murdered them. Yeah, you know? so <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, having said that, like it is a good show, but I can only watch it like one episode at a time. Pretty heavy. So like, I have to watch it, and I go, Fuck, I have to watch something else now, like yeah. something light hearted. It's heavy. Let's put on How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go... That 70s show. <laughs> two and a half men. Oh. So, yeah. Ben, how's your week been, man? Well, it's been full of two and a half... No, God. Um, I've been diving deep. <laughs> I don't want to uh, know. Adam, Adam. Shh. 
I don't want to know. Ah, uh, don't ask about the half. Um, <laughs> yeah. Are you the half? I, it's a real head and shoulders above the rest. Oh. Continue, please. <laughs> you made so, me drastically uncomfortable here. I've been diving into the Switch's indie library at the moment. So as I showed Ryan earlier, I've yep. been playing Celeste, which uh, a friend from work recommended me. And I hate him for it because I was like, no, I need to finish What's Dead fun? Cells now. And then he's like, ah, oh, I'll just play Celeste for a little bit on my, on my Switch. And You'll be fine, see, don't see, worry about see it. See if you like it. Later that night, I'm like, you <laughs> bastard. So now oh you're addicted. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I gotta finish that before one of my mates does, just to like rub salt in the wound, and just be like, ha, suck you, you're bad at video games! Yeah. Um, I've also picked up Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, because I was craving like a classic Vania experience, and uh, yeah. Wait, it's- hold on now. I should say that, right. You should play Hollow Knight. Classic Vania experience. Not Metroidvania, very different. Okay. So, like, more of a hard platformer that focuses on uh, pattern recognition and yeah. uh, on, on the spot problem solving rather than a huge ass map. Yep. So, those have been my, like, three indie pickups. Uh, Hearthstone recently uh, released some single player content where I think it's actually quite catered towards the two of you. Yeah. Uh, so it's problem solving using the deck of cards. Okay. So uh, they've got things like work out what the optimal way to kill your opponent is in this situation, mm. clear the board entirely, try and get both boards to look like each other. Okay. Uh, and survive. So I do like that. I was that's... actually playing like um, Into the Breach is what I've been playing on and off. And uh, that's a very similar kind of yeah. like so, tactical thing. It's fun. Um, normally I recommend the Hearthstone single player stuff for new players to CCGs, but this one isn't like that. This is more of a, if you're familiar with the mechanics of a card game, you should look at it because it, um, tweaks those, uh, logic. Biomes. Logic muscles. Yes. I actually, um, uh, didn't actually, didn't watch it, but uh, popped up in my feed, uh, the, uh, Valve News Network guy. He's actually, oh, yeah. uh, come out and said, um, Artifact isn't that bad. Like from what he's... Yeah. Like, <gasps> oh, well. That I, I want the game to be bad though, Ryan. You're not selling on me. I want I this game to be so bad because that... I just want it to fulfill my favorite video of all time on YouTube. Well, it's you still should... my favorite video. That you should see. Moan is is like crack to me. Yeah. Did... It's still it's still a kind of a disappointment that the first game, the first new IP, well, not even the new IP, the first new game that Valve has announced in like six years Isn't... is a fucking card game based on Dota. Yeah. Like, so yeah. you sh- you guys need to see the com- Int- sorry into a saturated card market. Go on. Yeah, that, that's the problem. Um, like you need of other better games already. Yeah. You need to see the comparison of like the announcement of Artifact versus the updated information from Artifact this year, and see the crowd like the dramatic crowd difference. It's not the oh, but everyone's actually excited for it. Yeah. Cool. Well, it's like it's it's the thing, right? People are going, oh my god, new Valve IP. Oh, it's a card game. That's the that's the disappointed moan. But the people who are actually into card games like, are like, okay, that's okay. actually not too bad. Yeah. So, Whereas everyone else has moved on. So yeah. Two more things it's before just not I half life three, man. That's the problem. Yeah. Before I let Adam do his thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, Rip, one of my favorite card games. Uh, incidentally, Gwent? no, not Gwent. I no, that's a great physical game. I never got into it digitally. Yeah. But uh, RuneScape Chronicles closed down forever. <laughs> Wait, okay. There was a, a RuneScape card game. I was aware of this. A, the, Why? there was a RuneScape card game? Yeah. Yep. I told you about... I've been telling you about it for like a year. You can go through <laughs> the yeah, yeah. archives. I can say he has mentioned this on the podcast several okay, times. Okay, yes. But at the same time, I've just been Fair like... Enough, you probably haven't been there for these ones though. I probably haven't been there for those ones. Um, you were I there think... for a few of them because I've been talking about it since past last year okay okay this is that you mentioned so many new indie titles i'm sure this one just slipped my mind and I just, you're like okay. I, how would a runescape like, property slip your mind well, ryan as slippery as your mind is it's like you, you say so much like you're like hey have you heard of like crazy frog racer it's like it's true you do talk about a lot of games that i would never play in my life so yeah. i'm just like just white noise i'm like oh that sound good <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. When, when I say hey, it does this... sound good. That white noise that's running through my head when you're talking about video games. 
<laughs> hey, when I do recommend a game, it's normally because this comes from a place. When I recommend a shit yeah. game, I go, you need to play this because fucking hell, it's bad. Shit. <laughs> bad, bad, bad. Yeah, so your second question about RuneScape was, wait, it was one of your favorites? And yes, because mechanically it was different to every other CCG. Okay. As in, the, oh, like I'm not going to go into it. I'll show you videos later. But it was cool. Now it's dead. Now it's <laughs> dead. Thank you, Hearthstone. Now I'm uh, fucking dead. Originality is dead. Fucking Hearthstone killed originality. <laughs> it's true, though. Like, the presence uh, of Hearthstone snuffing out any sense of innovation in the card game-based marketplace. But Hearthstone isn't even, like, the bee's knees original. anymore. It's not original! It's not, but it's not even not the bee's knees anymore. It's, it's Fortnite. You should blame all your problems on Fortnite. Fortnite killed the, your favourite game. When did they make a Fortnite CCG? Yeah, I will. You know that will happen. They, they fucking will. You know I would say it's probably going to be a mini-game that you play in the lobby while you're waiting to get launched. And, um... I'm not sure if I've told you guys about it, but uh, I've played the Fifth Element movie video game tie-in. Back to the white noise. Um, yeah, it's like... <laughs> yeah, <I'm fine. laughs> uh, so, to put it on a scale on something all you guys can relate with, mm. the video game is not as bad as Bubsy 3D. Great. That's, it's that's already great. starting strong. It's not much better. I mean, at least this one has textures. I was like, is this one finished? Is that yeah, the, yeah, yeah, this one has te- But tank controls in a platformer is just like... Oh. Mm, uh, 3D platformer or a platformer? 3D platformer. Okay. And also like a Quake and Duke Nukem style, like old shooting where you're like, oh, the enemy's over there. <laughs> <laughs> and it's shooting yeah. the other way. Yeah. yeah. Um, I got two levels in and then I... Like and that, that's that's where we, that's as far as we got, got with Bubsy 3D. Oh no, no, we went to the third level, but after having to restart it because the game crashed. Yeah, and it's you don't remember that, do you? That was for the channel. Oh, I do. Fuck yeah, God, that was funny. <laughs> um, and it was so bad. That was very and, funny. Like, there's not often I look myself, pardon me, in the eye and go, wait, why am I doing this? Yeah, to myself of all people, because I, you guys. The first and only time I've had that moment was in that Bubsy 3D uh, playthrough. Like, I went in there with the full expectation that it'd be crap, and it would be crap, but it would be awesome because I had Carl sitting next to me, and he would just be, like, ranting at the game. And I could just sit there and be like, this this is hilarious. But I got to the third level, and it broke me. I I just, I I was like... Why am I doing this to myself? I would say, you feel (laughs) the weight of your sin on your shoulders, and you're like... You can uh, if you watch if I think it's uh, I think I think we got three episodes out of that. If you watch that like this first and second episode, and you hear the third episode, you just hear my voice change. I just dead inside. I, I go I go died. from like happy go lucky to like I'm done. Yeah, like, it, it was actually a very good series. Yeah. Go watch it. I would say it reminds right. me of that quote from Aaron on the Game Grumps, where he's like, "You get to this moment in your life, and you're like, no, I got to spend the time doing what I love as opposed to doing what I hate." And that it sounds really inspirational and motivational. That was, that was, was a, in the middle of a Sonic 06 playthrough. People have got that like like quote, uh, and and pasted it onto like those inspirational memes, like you like, know the ones with like the he fancy text it in a moment of broken rage. Yeah, <laughs> like, they've, they've got it in like you know like you know uh, proper grammar with yeah. um with italics, and then like got like a picture of like a sunset or whatever. And he is screaming that, <laughs> screaming <laughs> it at the top of his lungs. That's bad against you, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So Sonic 06 will break a man, and uh, we look forward to Adam playing it. <laughs> yeah, I've already agreed to do that game. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. look. I was running late today. It's the only reason it's not here right now. So, so yeah. <laughs> looking forward to it. Oh yeah. yeah. So what's up with you, man? Um, not much. Uh, bought Octopath Traveler. I've been playing that. Pretty fun game. Um, there was. I have had some issues with the storytelling aspect of it so far because you know two of the stories are good and six no, of them like, are lame i haven't i haven't actually lame for story. lame i haven't minded the stories too much the only story that i was like i just want to get out of this story was uh the hunter oh Honey. really a hunter I, well yeah, okay yeah because her vo- the voice the voice of that town is everyone talks in like this old english haven't those dosts my Find us my master, and I'm like, I want to kill myself. All this right. is the worst. So the voice I, acted, I was like, 
if this was text only, I'd just be like, whatever. But it's the worst. Allow me it's to introduce so you to an ancient secret that I use for every time a badly dubbed game comes out. Put it in Play it in fucking Japanese. Everything else is fine. It's just that, no, that character. No, I, like, I, t- I switched it on. I heard Therian's voice in English and I'm like, I'm back to Japanese. That was all right. But anyway, but the game's you... pretty fun. The mechanics actually are really good. I've really enjoyed the battle mechanics. Um, so far, I've got five characters. Oh yeah, I was going to say, 10 hours you, in. Have you played Ophelia's chapter yet? No, not yet. Because you're going to be like, man, the Hunter's chapter was so bad. And I'm like, oh man. Oh, you haven't met Cardboard Cutout personified yet. Okay, cool. I was actually leaving her for the last. Yeah. So that's probably pretty Trash. Cool. Anyone who likes her is wrong and they should... <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun game though. Like, I'll oh, start with Primrose, I'll, which I'll be honest, apparently is the best character. To start yeah, with. I'll be Everyone's honest. Like, when you when you because you guys have been talking about Octopath for like a couple two, of weeks now, two months, two months, yeah. roughly. Yeah, like you, you've been bringing late. it up every time someone mentions Octopath. The only thing that pops into my head is Octodad. Okay, yeah. so tangent time. Let's make Octodad the JRPG. Let's Yo- not. Oh god, no. Div- I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking cut this short and do a bit of it and be like we're moving on to a topic. So I'm <laughs> yeah. not talking about that. Your individual party members are your limbs. Awful. Awful, awful decision. Awful decision. We're, decision. Move on. we're moving on. Alright. So <laughs> first thing for today, um we know how much we love talking about um how the game developers hate us and everything in game industry is bad and even though we love games, they suck. Um That's true. So um, Before you, we, get we're it. now vindicated, guys. We're vindicated. Someone on the inside of the enemy establishment has has come forth bravely and said something. So Shigeru Miyamoto um, was at a computer entertainment developers conference in Japan. Before you go into that, yes. do you want to explain who Shigeru Miyamoto is? Yeah, yeah so I would say so. This is not just like creator oh, yeah, a random plebiscite no, said this. Creator is bad. of Mario. And oh, current board member of Nintendo, Nintendo yeah. you know, like one of the biggest people in Nintendo, no, like huge, not not high. I mean, I could get this guy's resume out, but like it's it basically he's been the main kind of guiding force for Nintendo in the for the last league. thirty years. Yes, so yeah, in terms of both uh, game design and uh, like executive, yeah. So, because he was talking, so obviously that these kind of conferences are more for like developers and for the industry. So it's more bit business talk than what we're used to getting out of like E three. But the reason this was um, so important is because he had um, something in a, in a Bloomberg report that oh. was um, that uh, saying like we're lucky to have such a giant market. Um, so he, their thinking is that they can they want to keep delivering games at reasonable prices to as many people as possible, and we should therefore see big profits. Then goes on to say um, a lot of the ways that games are currently making money. While it does work um, for them, it's not. They don't feel it's a sustainable um, or it's necessarily the best practice. I think the idea is, and uh, I've got some opinions on this as well. But basically, that the idea of loot boxes and Market season passes and microtransactions and all the shit that we just kind of go. Me. The things that we've All been complaining time. about. If you've been following our podcast, yet you know. If you're, you know, yeah, you know what we fucking hate here, um, and basically saying that stuff like that's not our basket, and we think that we should continue pushing forward Nintendo's way of thinking, and hopefully, other developers set the example. Will will then follow suit, yeah. basically. So I find, while I find this note from him uplifting and yeah. fantastic. I do find it minorly hypocritical because the Switch well. has just released uh, online pass or whatever. Well, oh well, like, see, they circumvented their way around that because like, they're providing games with the online pass. Yeah, um, like the Game Pass Xbox does and shit like that, which is actually a pretty good deal. It's not Nintendo per se with themselves, uh, mm. but the moment Nintendo lets someone else use their property. It gets divvied up like you wouldn't believe. Mm. Like, for example, Pokemon with Niantic littered with microtransactions oh, yeah. in Pokemon Go. Yes. You can't go three foot without running po- into it. Pokemon Having fucking, said that... What, what's the pix- Pixel? God damn, I was playing pi- it. Pixelmon. Pixelmon. Having, oh, no, no, not Pixelmon. Pixelmon. It's, it's whatever they released to destroy Pixelmon. Pixelmon. Poker Island Resort. Um, Pokemon... 
It's, it, it's what they released. I have this game was playing the shit out of it. I would before, say Club I, so Pokemon. It basically has all fucking microtransactions. Yeah. And yeah. Free um, mutant model builds. I would say. Have uh, you seen that free game? Can, can't can, I, can I jump to at least Pokemon Go's defense in yes. the sense that as much as it has microtransactions, you don't have to use them. And I know that's a tired, it. tired argument. But like it's okay. the, the in-game just cosmetic. currency. Well, no. no, okay, no, no like, they can, are not no, cosmetic. Can, can, can you earn the um, stuff? Currency. You can, you can, can earn? You earn currency fast enough that you can get a full version of the game without blocking you. Yes. I play a Dragon Ball Z phone game. It's the same premise. But they give you the in-game currency enough that you get free packs often enough that realistically you can have a pretty good fucking team and not spend a dollar. The thing is it's not it's not even it's not loot like loot boxes in the sense that um that you don't know what you're getting, right? They have a yep. shop where you can buy the things that you want, right? If you want more egg incubators so you can hatch more Pokemon, you can buy them. They yep. cost two hundred coins, right? Mm. And you get fifty coins if a Pokemon stays in a gym for six hours. Okay. Oh, that's or eight hours. that's that's new. That's so, not too bad. And I think you have a limit of 50 coins a day. So in four days, you get an incubator, effectively. Which is, about it that way. like, if you're a regular player, that's not a bad... And as, yeah, as someone that is playing it at the moment, um, it's not bad. Like, yeah. I was expecting to be, to be like, shoved in my face and, like, hey, you should this, purchase this, this stuff. This. But it's not. It's like, if, there, there's no push. The shop exists mm-hmm. as an option, and there's a couple of places where it's, like, link, links to the shop. Yeah. But other than that, it's not like, hey, you should purchase this. And, and it's interesting as well from Nintendo's perspective if they've actually... I know for... So, this article... So, I'm actually reading this off the... Um, a lot of stuff off the Game Informer article, which mm-hmm. is very handy. Um, source. Um, that Nintendo... They, they point out, like, Nintendo's Super Mario run was the thing that came out, and that didn't actually do that well because they specifically took microtransactions out. And games from Nintendo that have done really well are games like the Fire Emblem... Oh yeah, game that shit. came out. I forgot about that. And that that does have microtransactions, and that does fucking great. And but was ha- it made by Nintendo or just licensed? No, no, that is Nintendo. That's the okay. Nintendo game. Having said that, though, we're talk- those games are all freemium games, which realistically, like, you're buying, you're getting a freemium game. Well, you've got to expect they've got to make money somehow, yeah. and if it's free, then obviously they're going to be pushing microtransactions. See- Get used to it. So yeah. you, Mario Run, like which is the other one you're talking about, that is, was a fifteen dollar game though. I would that say, was like a, a reasonably expensive app. Right. See, and that's the problem. It just like the style of gameplay just didn't appeal to me. Yeah. If it, I like if it did, I would have no problem paying fifteen dollars on, on the on the runners side of thing. I would have much preferred to have a Pitfall Harry, sort of. Yeah. A mascot, right? As opposed to like a Mario. Like I put Mario as a platformer sort of thing. Per, like personally, it seems like, a bit weird. It seems a bit weird. Yeah. Anyway, so that's Mario. Like I said, they're not entirely clean in this debate. But no. what I do like that they've done is they've, and I've never thought they like we've come so so far that where I talk about DLC being a positive thing, but a lot of uh, Nintendo's DLC has either been free or paid for significant content. For example, in uh, Splatoon 2, the more in-depth, more challenging, and completely different uh, single-player campaign is a paid-for DLC. It's not cheap, but it's like, this is not part of the base game. This was developed afterwards, and this will extend the life of this product. It's basically the old-school expansion pack yeah, yeah. In, instead of instead of the stuff that's like oh we developed this up front but cut it out of the the, out the, of the game the game we, 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 we need to have a like an upstream that's w- that's why i didn't revenue path i like didn't a, i didn't like, actually mind um fallout 4's um dlcs for that reason right because it was like hey we have the base game the base game has been released you know sure they had a season pass but they were like we are developing dlcs from this point right yeah. we, the base game is out our dlcs are going to be on top of that yeah. Right. It's not yeah. just oh, we cut it out. Yeah. But see, and tying this all together, going back to the uh, yin yang of Nintendo pointing this out, mm. is they have DLC in Pocken, for example. Now, DLC in a fighting game, I feel, is inherently unfair because weird, hey? to play on a level playing field, you need every character. Like for for example, yeah. imagine playing Smash, us, and you didn't have Cloud. But I did. But that that is a thing, though. That's a thing. Like in Smash, those DLC characters, you have to pay for them. Yeah, I know. And this is the same point. Or Bayo. Yeah. yeah. Like, like these are 
And once again, the DLC characters normally fulfill a niche or are significantly better than other things, which presents a huge problem. And I wonder in light of this, how do you think Nintendo will go about addressing DLC going forward? Um, well, I think they're going to continue doing that model. I think what they'll want to do is they'll do DLC, absolutely, because they, they're, still, they're still game developers. They're still going to want to make money. Um, I- and, and, like, I honestly think the times of you releasing a game and that game stands on its own and that's it, probably dead. Don't really think... Like, Unless- there's going to be... A, there has to be, like, <clears throat> people are going to... It might not be an online service, but there's always going to be DLC. There's always going to be something... It, it's an expectation that games don't live past their original release. Um, like that's not the final version. In ter- actually, if I can jump sort of away from Nintendo, in terms of yep. um, a DLC that just came out because the developers wanted it to come out and mm. it's free. Oh yeah, Crash, Crash and Sane trilogy. Right? Yeah, ostensibly single player game. Right. Yeah. There's no loot boxes. There's no microtransactions. It's just hey, here's a game. It cost what was it like? 50 bucks on launch if that if that i think it was like 40 having said that um, though that's an established game that's like a remaster so that's where it, people they can think well yeah, we'll probably but, get our money back because it's but it a wasn't game it wasn't necessarily a um want it, right? it wasn't necessarily like a critically acclaimed success yeah. uh, it had its it had its flaws but then hey a year later they just released like oh here's this unreleased level yeah, here's this level we were working on way back then that we found in the files and polished up for you. Yeah. Cool. And it was free. Like yeah. it wasn't it wasn't just like, oh, you know, you have you have to pay ten bucks or five well, bucks or two bucks well, or whatever. Mimoto kind of notes that kind of thing as well and says that like when he's talking about subscription style services, which is like I would say you you even, Wow. Well, not even in in this context is even stuff like Xbox Live mm. is like Switch whatever they're online gaming gaming thing is where it's just like saying it's necessary for developers to learn to get along with subscription style services uh when seeking partners for this it's important to find someone who understands the value of your software then customers will feel value in your apps and software and develop a habit of paying money for them so his idea is not rather kind of suck people in and then microtransactions no his his idea is make good games games and make good customers and then people will be like oh a new nintendo game's coming out I'm gonna buy that. Yeah. Someone's just bought like a new like great example in Insomniac games. People people like that. They're, they're a developer that has a lot of good faith. Mm-hmm. Um, CD Projekt Red is another one. And then when like when people like oh Spider Man games coming out and you're like okay cool like there's been some really great Spider Man games and there've been some really bad ones as well mm-hmm. and they're like Insomniac games and they people are like fuck yes yeah. down and immediately that was like cool well, I'm gonna buy that now Insomniac. The creators of Spyro, the creators of Ratchet, yeah. the creators, like that's the thing. Like that's what I think of when I when I hear Insomniac. It's like all these great games are associated with that name. Yeah, you know. So and and, and that's the thing. So when when you, when you are looking for someone, um, to to partner with that, then then you're like, we we want someone with that kind of recognition mm. of being like, yeah. okay, cool. It's the same. It's they, the same. They're gonna make games that don't fuck us. Cool. That's great. But it, which it's also the same. leads us into the Spyro conversation. Yeah, as well, it does. Right? We'll, we'll, but I will come yeah. back to that. Well, it's great games like it, Sunset it also means, Overdrive. It also means that names can be tarnished Dudes. when when crazy stuff happens in the industry. I mean, look at what happened with Infinity Ward, right? Yeah, yeah. They didn't get paid, right? Because Activision's like, we're not paying you for Modern Warfare Two until you make Modern Warfare Three. Uh, which and is then, insane. which is insane, which which is the book publishing model, originally. Really, a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of uh, authors would sign contracts that say, "Hey, we won't um, pay you until for the first book until you've started work or you know, re- announced or released the second. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> it's stupid. It, it is stu- anyway, but you know it happens. Yep. And and the thing is, in t- Infinity Ward's name kind of got tarnished. Because eighty percent of their developers left, and so everyone's like, "Oh, well, Infinity Ward, Ward is basically a shell of its former self." Yeah, you know, they Absolutely. made a great game, sure, but you know, I wouldn't yeah. trust them now. Yeah, so it, it's 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 going to be interesting because, like, I don't know, because I actually played um, Bra- is it called Brawl Out Ben? Yeah, Brawl Out. So it's a Smash Brothers Brawl clone. Clone. Yeah, but it's it's on. Oh, well, I played it on Xbox. I don't know what, what it's on. Playing. Everything. It's on everything. It's fun. Played it. Plays well. Not sna- Controls aren't quite as snappy as Smash, 
but it was a fun game. Oh, I so mucked around with it. I did, was like, we'll play players in the channel. Pretty did fun. you enjoy it because you just haven't been exposed to Smash for like yeah, three years? I'm like, fuck, I need to play something. But, yeah, the, thing, but the thing is though, I, I, excited, it was, it was a fun game, but immediately opened it up. Now, this is money. This is a game that my brother downloaded, paid money for, it was like 20 bucks, I think, from memory. Paid money for it, downloaded it, opened it up, first thing he saw, daily login. And I was like, oh no. Cool, all right, this this game, right, cool, great. And then immediately, it was like, hey, you can open a pin, like, you can, with your coins, you can buy pinatas and whack them and open them. And I'm like, yep, okay, cool. But, <laughs> and but it was it's... like, there's three levels of pinatas and one is for skins and the other one is for new character, like, uh, there's like, they do like colorized, just recolors of the same skin, yeah. which is in one. And there's actually a new skin yeah. for the character. And I'm like, that's in another one. And then there's like Rocket League style um, flare upgrades. Like when you get hit and your character goes soaring, then it gives a little like sparkly trail or whatever. Like those trails and all these customization options. And I was just I like, like how he used ro- um, Rocket League for that example. I saw you smiling out of the corner of my well, eye. Well, yeah, it's, it, like, it was almost the same like actual cosmetic style things in Rocket League. And I was just what I would like, call unusuals in Team Fortress 2. <laughs> yeah. And I was just kind of like, oh, oh, like you paid $20 for this and now we're getting bombarded with like, open a loot box. And like, fuck me. Really? I've waited so long to hear Adam, of all people, complain about cosmetic loot boxes. No, I know. Mr. Overwatch I, is fine. fine. The loot boxes are cosmetic. Brawlout is by the same logic. Brawlout is fine. You're just talking about cosmetic but, but, boxes. But the, but the thing is, though, what's the problem with some me, skins, okay, man? Also, what's the problem with having things that you used to unlock for free? But the thing is, so my my complaint with that is that for me, Overwatch, <laughs> Overwatch is first person, so I don't give a fuck. Like Overwatch is a first person shooter, and I'm like. I feel yeah. like he's just nickel and diming now. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's not something I give a shit about. And the thing is, most of them are like sprays. But for me, so I think it's my thing. Like it's a third. Per- it's like a side-scrolling smash game. The whole thing is characters. There's only like eight or nine characters in the game, and everyone has like shitloads of skins. The thing Gee, is, skins nine are- characters in a game that have lots of customization options. Now, where have I heard that before? Hmm. Ba-da-da-da. <laughs> I'm oh, personally, oh, I'm just I am like heavy weapons guy. But it's cost but, three million dollars <laughs> to, to play uh, this game and, for ten years. And, 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 and I think the funny thing is, though, is that what got me so mad about this compared to um, something like Overwatch is that I'm I just jump on play Overwatch and then you play a bit and then it'll be like, hey, you unlocked a new loot box. I'm like, cool. And to me, that's as far as I interact with the I, thing. I get where you're coming where, from. Where this is like, your daily login bonus. And then every battle you finish, even Couch Cop's like, you earn this much in-game currency. And I'm like, you, everything is tied around. Yeah. And everything is drawing that, me that towards is, that is buying shit. That, I'm like, yeah. fuck off. I understand where you're coming from. Because in Overwatch, you know, yeah. you launch the game and it, it's still, like, it's just the game, right? It's the game. You, you have the, the game, game, you play the game, it has the lore in the background, that whatever. But yeah. like... And then eventually it's like, oh yeah, you, you got a loot box, but cool, don't don't, don't box, worry right. about it. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Um, but then yeah, you get these games which are like microtransactions. Yeah, it, every every single thing you do in the game is like, hey, you got this in-game currency, maybe buy a loot box with it. Even like the Smash style um, panels of the the main screen Character thing has the big one in the middle is the store. Of course. Oh, it was well, the pinata, and yeah. I was like, that's the fucking loot box. I was like. Yeah immediately it just feels like why are you doing this like and like this game costs money like again it's again twenty dollars it's not a full price title but still so it's like so it's pay to pay pretty much pay to pay yeah so Uh, and speaking of i think i think we should i think we should um maintain online servers something something yeah something something go screw themselves um should we talk about spyro a brief, yeah, absolutely. A brief yeah. Moment. No, absolutely. We, we did say we we're going to get back to well, that. Well, this 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 actually loops in very nicely with our conversation. Yeah. So originally, Spyro the Remastered trilogy was going to be released. I want to say in a month, October ish, mm. um, but it got delayed. Yeah. Now the reason for this delay is actually good news. But before we can get to that, we'll go back 
So yeah. do you know the bad news about the Spyro trilogy remaster? Well, Adam? I know people were complaining about it because they had um, they didn't have time to they wanted to push release date forward. They weren't going to make it, so they said first one will be on disc, and then the other two have to be downloaded. Uh, yeah, that was the kind of. Problem. I don't know if that was that was exact. So what happened was marketing came out for Spyro, right? Yeah. And it was like the Spyro trilogy remastered. One game on disc, you have to download the other two. Well, I think I think that was the just reasons. Generally the idea be, the of, reasons behind it, inconsequential, probably, probably right? Like we didn't have time. We've only got time to put it on one. But that's the thing, right? And it's like people yeah, are like, "Well, two. I'm paying for all three games, and you're telling me I can only play one on the disc." And for a lot of people, and especially in Australia, I suppose where our internet's not that great, it's like download. Great, download. I now have to spend three hours downloading. But not even that. Ninety percent of my content. I lost a ranked game more, last man. night like, because of that. But, you you but, lost what? I lost a ranked game because of Australian it, internet it, last night. I was especially maybe because people also are like, um, not even internet speed, but because we have capped internet. Here. If someone's on a low low plan, oh yeah, absolutely. Like, I'm going to not be out of downloads for this. And uh, and then and then taking fucking if, dumb. But even if you take really even good. if you take the um the the download side out of the equation right then you start getting into okay well my console's only got 500 gigabytes and you're telling me i have to down download 50 yeah right I only or, have, yeah, oh yeah, crap no. well rocket league's taking up 60 and uh the new cod games taking up um you know 20 and like it adds up and mm. people are like well mm, do i really want to download spyro right. eh, forget it's, it actually it's dumb tangent related to that because i just went through this i brought a 200 gig card for my switch and on the switch there is no way of moving a game from the internal memory to the external card. That mm. shit. You have to... Uninstall and reinstall? Yeah. And then it automatically redirects to the card. Sorry, dumb tangent. <sighs> but the good news is Spyro has been delayed. Yes. Wait, and the what? reason why Spyro has been delayed is because the developers pushed back against the publisher about this. And said no. And said no. We want to release the game complete on disc and updates would be in, like inconsequential you know like a few patch patches and whatnot whatnot but we don't want to patch a game in we don't much. want to patch an entire game in and the reason That's is good. that the publisher probably listened and i'm gonna chalk this one up to the internet yeah. because, because the, really backlash the backlash was huge yes. yes everyone's just like fuck this noise i actually yeah. did see some people disappointed that spyro is getting delayed though i, uh, did, well, I did actually that oh, was a thing I'm, people being like I was fine with downloading this. I just wanted to play it earlier. And I was like, well, See, well, you know. Yeah, it is the trade-off. And to be honest, like, as a software developer, I understand the delay completely. I, from, a, from, from a software perspective, I would rather say, let's wait, push this out in the finished product. Because yeah. the thing is, they would be running to the finish line to patch in two complete games. Yeah. The chance of you making mistakes there, very high. The thing is, the thing if is, you're running well, short of time already, you the really second, need to just say, fuck the second it. game, Hold the up. second game was pretty much done and it's yeah. the third game that's, um, that's the problem. And then there was the publisher that so, said, well, fuck it, we'll just release one game and put the other two as so DLCs. Let's, yeah, let's really. just take a different approach to this. Why don't you have a staggered release? Yo, these games are ready to download digitally if you want it that way. We're having problems but doing the productions it's... of the physical discs, so just wait a month. Oh, oh you mean oh, right, oh, right. So, so you're not saying staggered available like... for digital download yes. immediately and a month later discs come yes. out. Um, yeah, but then people are going to complain that they feel ripped off because they're physical media people and they have to wait another month to play the game. Who cares? Like, I mean, people, the physical media complain. person's me. Yeah, I know. and I go. They could sell a copy that's like digitally available now, and your copy will be shipped to you within two months. Yeah, I've actually brought some of those before. Mm. But yeah. uh, you know, but anyway, so the good news is uh, all three games will be a part of the one disc and it will be available, I think it was November or, well, Christmas. It'll be available before Christmas. So, cool. yay, win for the game industry. That's and still a really good time to release as well. It like it, That probably also factored the publisher being like, wait, so you're going to release on Christmas? I'm um, sure, fuck it. Well, sure. having said that, <laughs> I think October is probably a better time to release that sort of stuff. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because you get what you get then is you get the people that want the game like immediately will buy, go out and buy it. Then the people that want to buy it as a present for Christmas, oh, yeah. buy it as well to get their kids involved. And like then their kids or their whatever. And, and then involved. the people who need a game to throw in a console they're purchasing because this is a budget title. You yes. get that as well. Yeah. So and now that it's carries like, hey, on over to January. Yes. Mm. 
Yeah, and buy buy a PS4. And it comes with a copy of Spyro. Plus, plus the um, you're gonna be uh, there's a lot of the big big titles released on Christmas time. Yes, like partic- like Smash. Like, yeah, so Smash. so there's I'll, also another ones like the Halo Halo franchise. No one cares well about no one like they fucking always cares about Halo. Well, I think they do it as an anniversary, but they re- actually release. Oh, they also End announced of, mid in November. Are they still making Halo games? Yeah, I think they just announced another Halo anniversary Big collection. Oh. Halo. Oh, that's actually cool. Halo anniversary for so Game Pass, which again I think is actually a reasonable deal. Um, they so it's basically like you pay for the back catalog kind of style of things for all Microsoft games and anyone that they they've got deals with to put their games up there. Yeah. Um. Well, I've done those on Steam. Yeah. Yeah. So this. Um, and then you get access to play the games. Yeah. The, the oh, yeah. games can go off, but only really if they lose publishing rights or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're putting up the Halo Legacy collection on it. So what, for like, what, $10, $15, $10 a month or something, you can play any Halo game. Sweet. I was like, that's pretty fucking great. That's I've, a pretty um, good deal. But back, that's pretty good. Back in the day of amazing Steam sales, um, yeah. I ended up getting like all of the Call of Duties for like 40 And bucks. these are all the remastered versions as well. So oh, like, it's, fuck, and for some, good. For some reason, good I have deal. like, an entire CRPG collection which no man will ever have the time to finish because it's like 50 cents and you get every game in this uh, fine whatever buy the Ubisoft bundle you know I did like on a slight tangent I did like that Steam started doing the things where it's like this bundle is 50 bucks but you already own three games so we're going to discount those games cost from the the bundle price what I liked however is this game is 50 bucks you already own these games so we're going to give you these three games as gifts to throw at your friends Mm-hmm. That too. That's, that's that's my thing. I'm like, here. I you, think I did. You. Fuck. I think uh, it was party. Did party saboteurs do that? Because I like, bought a copy and then it was like, maybe. yeah. I, I, I think there was a couple of games. That I got. Were like, I, I got all the Jackboxes pretty cheap in the last sale as well. Yeah. I would say, I like me and him do it with Left 4 Dead all the time. Yeah. And um, what's free keys? Yep, what's the other is. one like i think i've done it with nidhogg and a few other ones Maybe where i'm Nidhogg like Nidhogg was the one that did it as well where i'm just like okay it's five dollars more for three extra copies i will just throw these at people unfortunately they've changed it as well they've got um they used to be that they just lived in your inventory so you could just purchase during a sale right like and say like like you know, buy the left for dead four pack. buyer's gift um buyer's gift it just sit, sits in your inventory as full copies of the game and then well they used to anyway it used to sit there and then you could just send, um, send them out but now it's like who do you want to gift these to right now? You have to buy them as a gift and then send them. Because what, now this is getting into really shady aftermarket <laughs> stuff. So what you do is you'd buy it on sale, hold it in a cache state, wait for the average market price to rise above what you did and then sell it then. Yeah. It's like stock markets with video games. Yeah, and people were doing it um, quite severely. Also, not to mention that the amount of fucking loopholes you have to go through now to get a new Steam account. Oh, yeah? Oh, oh, this is old news, but Uh, to, like, provide a gift copy of a game to a new Steam account, it's like... Oh, yeah, yeah. I do know that. You have to have uh, $5 worth of purchases on Steam. And being a a member for, like, two weeks and, you know, offered your left testicle to a game. No, but you can get get around that. Is that for, like, bot accounts, though? Yes, it's to stop botting and that sort of stuff. But no, but what's... to stop hacking. Literally, the two things you need to do is attach a uh, phone for two-factor authentication and uh, buy something, like, something that's worth five bucks. So you just go in and you buy a Steam key. So, or, or and like this a, is where we go. So the multi-platform experience, oh, I mean, multi-app store experience. Steam now has a buy-in cost? Yeah. Dude, dude, all hail the Discord master race. Yeah, I don't, I, if the thing is, yeah, anyway. Let's, let's, get, let's move on to our next topic. What do you reckon, Adam? Okay, yep. Yeah. All right, so we'll move on there. Sorry, I was trying to organize something we're actually doing a massive filming session today so i'm like trying to organize everything at once um cool so should we talk about twitch prime yes twitch prime so oh god (laughs) i'll I'll admit i don't know much about this so so long and short of this is um amazon who we don't have much to deal with amazon here because we do now we do now we are getting to that point i would say so Um, i just want to Quick question yes. before we tangent onto this. Are you a Twitcher? Like, do you Twitch? Are you subscribed to anyone? Do you do things? Me? Yeah. No, I follow a whole bunch of people. I, I used to, I used to, like, I tried I'm to, I tried to get into it. Um, I started watching stuff when Twitch Plays Pokemon was a thing. Mm. Um, and then I started watching, um, what are they, the Cheese TV guys. Uh, oh, Jade, Jade and Jade Ryan. Ryan. 
Yeah. Um, which was really cool. I watched a couple episodes of that. Uh, but the thing is, that sort of stuff, this, the whole stream of not much happening for like hours and then occasional hilar- hilarity didn't really appeal to me i'll be honest yeah I, i'm more i'm more i like the sort of the edited the cut content i personally. generally don't have the time to sit down and watch and that's that's long true stuff now if i have the time to sit down and watch three hours of someone playing a game i'll just play a game see yeah. well sometimes people like like will have a twitch stream while they're playing something else yeah yeah and like they'll, that's, they'll be playing a game but also watching but like like games. but the thing is that that might work for stuff like card games and stuff but I don't play card games. Yeah, that's fair. I'm so, see, as the person who I'm guessing from this context, that's who, why I pointed who, at you. Who twitches the mo- like, yeah. consumes Twitch the most. Yeah. Um, I actually do have Twitch Prime and Amazon Prime because I like getting. I like. Mm, I really need this tomorrow. Mm. Delivery, mm. and the answer to time in consumption is I. I grew up in a very noisy house. Adam will like. Adam is loud, but he's about on par with the loudness that the rest of the family generates. Yeah. It's quite fit in. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're you're a bit louder, but yes, oversaturate me, Daddy. <laughs> um, Work so, with natural light, man. It's for the fucking house. Yeah. yeah anyone watching the video is just like the sun keeps coming through the window and it just keeps like lighting uh, Ben up. He looks like a fucking ghost. Well, yeah. I mean, I already look like a ghost, yeah. but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, you need to get outside more, but that's not the point. Anyway, uh, um. So, the lack of people noise around me is just fucking Disturbing. weird. Yeah. Now, Twitch fills that void. Um, I've got this streamer I like to follow who does basically any MOBA and then like once a week goes... So you kind of use Twitch as what people used to leave the TV on for. Yeah, pretty much. But with content that I actually don't mind paying attention to. Mm. Um, more recently, I've been so Twitching him mm. and... Playing games that actually require concentration as well, not just card... Well, card games require... You know what I mean. Yes. Yeah. So... Constant attention. Yeah. So, um, I don't understand when people can't do that split focus thing. No, yeah. That's not a jab. That's like a... I know. It's just... Bit- when I play games, generally I try and get in the moment, in the zone. So, yeah. like, if I'm playing... It depends on what game you're playing. Well, yeah, but a lot of the games that I'm playing is sort of... A lot of the games I'm playing is TF2 so, or well, TF2 no, or but like, Crazy Frog Racer. So, okay. So, what are we going to... Okay. I'm All right. Now, now we've short. done our Let's tangent go. on Twitch. Okay. So, <laughs> Twitch Prime's so changing. So, Twitch Prime. So, what Amazon Prime is doing is they have... Um, they've actually been removing discounts that people get. If you have Twitch Prime, that you get certain discounts and of stuff. Yep. One is gaming. You get discounts on pre-orders. Uh, if you pre-order, then you get like 20% off. The game oh, or, okay. I know through, the the through the Twitch interface. Through the Twitch interface. Um, that's gone. So rather than having one account, which is your Amazon Prime, you now have to have two to get the same. Oh, no, 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 no. So you have a Prime account and you get Twitch Prime, you get Amazon Prime, you get all the stuff. And, and a lot of people in the US especially have Amazon Prime just because they do their shopping mm-hmm. through Amazon or whatever. Not oh. us so much. But Twitch Prime is still something that you can get here as well. Mm-hmm. Um, like... It gives you a free sub it and did. like one day shipping on anything it, it, from Amazon. Yeah, okay. so it gives you yeah a free, but sub, it's a free like, sub to somebody and also how much ad is free, it? ad free, ad free across all Twitch. Yep. So problem, they have removed the ad freeness of Prime. Ah. They have also put in something called Twitch Turbo, which now has ad free. Okay, which context? Twitch Turbo was a thing. Then Twitch got bought by Amazon, and they kind of. Twitch Turbo is now a thing. It's now a thing again. Yep. So Twitch originally had ads, and then they brought in Twitch Turbo, which removed ads. Then they got bought by Amazon, who deprecated Twitch, Twitch, Prime. Yep. Twitch, Twitch Turbo for Twitch Prime to have not ads. And then they go, well, actually, no, Twitch Prime can now we have need, ads, we but need we need more Twitch ads. Turbo. We need more ads, because it, well, I think what it is is they realize with all the discounts they were doing, they will giving away, away too much money. And they're like, fuck. Um, we have, we've... we've, we've done too nice of a thing here um and they've been like oh but you know but that means we're giving you a chance like if like the ads are going to be more like targeted so they're not going to bother you and I... they're going to be they're going to be like these great things the and, thing is... about, and don't worry when you watch an ad you're helping the creator of the channel and i'm like yeah but it's not helping you that's kind of a shitty argument really yeah like, it is you know. that's like saying watching youtube and, ads helps the creator said, of the and... channel <laughs> well 
I deliberately pay so I don't have to put up with that bullshit. So I'm a bit on edge with this where I'm like, I'm already paying. I don't want this shit. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's, People are like, that's I'm the paying problem. for this service. You still get your free sub. Your free sub does entitle you to ad free viewing of that channel. So, okay. so if you're subscribed to. I, Balmy, name, whatever. Pay- ninja. You subscribe to Ninja. You love Ninja. Want to see more Fortnite as much as possible. And you don't want an ad blocking your Fortnite experience. If you subscribe to Ninja, you will not get ads. It's interesting. On Ninja's thing. You come over and watch <coughs> and go to, say, a pinch of salt on paid, Twitch. Paid. And then you will get a fucking ad. Paid subs is like a weird concept to me. Because I'm so well, used to YouTube. Okay. I'm just like, so, yeah. I just hit subscribe. You're saying I can't hit subscribe you can still on follow Twitch? Some, you can still follow someone on Twitch, which is like the idea of subscribing on YouTube because you get notifications when that person is live and yes. you can watch them. But subscribing is like, you get usually custom em- emotes. You'll get a whole bunch of things. You Basically, the idea is becoming part of that community. Oh boy, custom emotes. Yes. Well, oh, wow. I, I honestly do it so I can throw money at creators. And, and, I like and because you're, you're paying for the content you watch, basically. Yeah, I'm just like... It's a way to fund them. Fuck you, I enjoy it. Have my Go. Um, but yeah, so they ha- basically said here that um, you, you, you get an ad for with Turbo now. That you're like, oh, we get the ad-free experience and... You know, you get the new chat colors and so, you get so, so the turbo they, badges. And did they just the like silently go, um, like the, not even mention that they're cutting ads from Twitch Prime and just be like, we're announcing Twitch Turbo ad free viewing on Twitch. And everyone was like, wait. <laughs> no, no, they put up a blog post here. So I've got their blog post okay. that was like changes to Twitch Prime. You know, we launched Twitch Prime. We were determined to give streamers and their viewers the best value in gaming. And since then, we've seen the Twitch community. So blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. And they mentioned, we've given more than $1,000 worth of games and loot. And you're like, cool. Well, you know. More than $1,000? Um, this, we've offered members more than $1,000. So I think members, like, for individuals. So individ- some individuals have gotten more than $1,000 of free shit. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's kind of been like, this is why we're doing it, everyone. We're fucking broke. Oh, all right. I thought, I, I, sorry, when, when they said like... Like, we gave away $1,000. dollars you are Twitch, sure. Fuck off. I was like, like you've given away $1,000. Nothing. Wow. No. Um, so they said, um, yeah, basically that if you're currently on Twitch and then you're like, the time you next have to repay for your subscription, your yearly subscription, then you'll come on to the new version where you get ads. So if you... If you Registered yesterday. You're good for a year. You're good for a year. However, the new other things features they're bringing to Twitch Prime, like there's some actual like new functionality that users want. They don't come in either. Like you get rolled to the next version Uh, on your next year. Prime 2.0. Yeah. So what features are they bringing to Prime 2.0? Um. Uh. Well, it's all other Twitch Prime benefits like monthly sub channels, monthly games and loot. Chat badges are not changing. So basically, it looks like, yeah, we're just removing ads. <laughs> ad freeze gone. That's, Bye, that's, that's it. Twitch Prime 2.0 is just, yeah, there's ads now. <laughs> <laughs> there's ads now. This is the worst features, provision ever. <laughs> features that people want. Feature rich. <laughs> Feature rich. Um, so Feature, yeah. <laughs> featuring all these sponsors. Is ad-free viewing still possible on Twitch? Ad-free viewing experience is still possible. All Twitch viewers can get ad-free viewing across all channels by subscribing to Twitch Turbo. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck? What the fuck? So, I understand from a business perspective, like, I get it. Like, I understand. In saying that, though, to a lot of people, they're like, I'm paying for something now that I'm going to get ads. Yeah. I'm getting all this annoyance. Having, like... It's as, just going to drive people I, I'm, away. I'm obviously not the target market for this, but, like, I'm the sort of person that doesn't really like having to subscribe to multiple things at a time. Like, it took me a long time to sign up for Netflix. Yes. Right. Um, I'm I'm only just now considering signing up to Spotify. Mm-hmm. Right? Oh no, dude! I still if you stream Spotify from the PC, the ads are minimal. Yeah, I'm well, like, <laughs> but the difference is because I'm using it on my phone. I can really shuffle. I can't. I, yeah, I got I got Spotify Premium solely because I was like, fuck free version of Spotify. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. I I'm, I I don't mind shuffle, but at the same time, sometimes I just like I just want to hear this one song. Yeah, you know the feeling. Yeah. Anyway, you just want to listen. That's exactly to- ah, why it's yeah, like- absolutely. <laughs> ah, you've opened the sunlight again. Um, but yeah, so like, I'm the sort of person that's like, there has to be a real fucking value add for me to be like, no, I desperately want this. That's why, like, when people are like, oh, you know, um, like, I actually like um, the Top Gear's new show. What are they, what are they called? 
Uh, no. The Amazing Race? No. Um, I don't know. I uh, watched it at my mate James' house. Uh, but anyway, the point is, the point is, um, I really enjoy it, and I mm. would probably watch it if it was on Netflix. Yeah. But I'm not going to pay Amazon for it. Hey, do you want my Amazon details to watch it? I think maybe Bin Bin has Stan. I can um, do that as well. And Bin's like, money. hey, there's this great new show on Stan, and I'm like, you've already lost me. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's the thing. It's like, Stan. yeah, <laughs> it's this great new show. I'm interested. It's on so, Stan. Yeah, okay, never mind. The only thing I'd give a fuck about Stan for is that they have. Um, the Australian license for all um, streaming related to Seinfeld. So I was like, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, don't you have that entire I'm, thing on DVD? I don't own it. No. Oh, no, my, pa- my parents have all the box series. So I was like, I need to steal them. I can't, we, watch, I can't watch Seinfeld whenever I want now. That's and, a problem. And you know what the terrible thing is? It's like, I could just buy Blue. I was like, I'm, I'm yeah, just, I was like struggling to think of like, how could I play a DVD just then? I was like, how can I play a DVD? And I was like, oh my, my God, I've got a PS4. DVD. I've yeah. got a PS4. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, my Xbox, okay. that's the only way I can play so, DVDs So, d- dumb statement before we go into wrap up. Yeah. We should make a pie field, which is Seinfeld on a Raspberry Pi. So your stream, like, your Seinfeld as a service is you just put the pie near the TV. Seinfeld and it- as a service. I love that acronym. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 Yeah. I want it. I want it. Now I'm down. <laughs> Fuck, Seinfeld is a service. Fuck. Speaking of, um, as a wrap up as well, um, we'll uh, just want to, like, I was going to say, hey, do you remember that, that the, the, there's a hilarious Seinfeld video that um, is being got, making the rounds about, like, with the uh, Australian Seinfeld heads oh. and the line and, like, bits from Seinfeld. <sighs> On heads of Australian pro- like politicians and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's amazing. It is pretty funny. It's fucking amazing. Um, it's awful and it's, it's it, that, sad. It's been going around for a few years because it's called like Tony Abbott and stuff and on that on it. So, but it is it is pretty pretty funny and it's also pretty sad. And it came out because like they reposted everything yesterday because like of our fucking godforsaken misery of a fucking Australian Parliament. Oh moment. my god. So we're moving to Canada. Oh. What are you doing? Oh. Uh, is our Canada New Zealand? I think it'd be like we're, not, okay, we're moving to New Zealand. No, 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 fuck New me. Zealand is like a totalitarian regime, man. Yeah. All hail yeah. Scomo. Fuck. No, get lost. Jesus, I'm uh, like, I'm so like, we could do another hour of I was talking like, about this. I was, I mean, I, it's like I'm already disillusioned about about our Australian government. I have been since year twelve. No, I have just have been. I think it's yes. obvious. <laughs> when I came out of the womb, I, was like, I lit up a cigarette and was like, "Fuck the man!" Out, I came out of the womb, saw John Howard's eyebrows, and wanted to go straight yeah. back in again. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, uh, guys, guys, uplifting things. What uplifting exciting things. Fortnite like next Fortnite stuff are I you? We were talking about. Fortnite I thought it's like game. I'm not up to date with what the fuck Fortnite is doing. I don't care about Fortnite because I can't play it on my Switch and the PS4 because the gaming industry is a sham. Yeah, I know that was pretty bad. Um, yeah, so I am ooh, excited. There's not many games coming out at the moment, is there? Or the ones that you're interested in? The one I'm playing, I'm playing um, Octopath like fucking crazy, and I'm that's gonna take me forever. Um, I'm games. I've been looking at um getting a <laughs> as crazy as it sounds a PSP Go. Yeah. Because well, well, actually, wait, what is a PSP Go? Okay, so you know a PSP. I and you know how they have PSP and PSP 2000 and PSP 3000? They've okay, got like so different versions of PSP. Internal model revisions. In, internal the model revisions. They've, they've, anyway, the point is, it's kind of like how you have PS4 and PS4 Pro, Xbox and Xbox yeah, yeah, One yeah. S or whatever. Anyway, the models, I've, I've been so far out of the PSP game, apparently. There is a model of PSP yeah. which only plays download games. Right. It's, called yes, the it's PSP. still supported. It's called the PSP Go right. and it is still supported. However... Guess what download games are available on the PSP Go, as well as PSP games? PS1 Classics. Oh, really? So I would like to play some PS1 Classics on the go. Okay. Both on the go and on the go. Both literally and metaphorically. Yes. Um, so I've been sort of like hunting around a bit. There's a couple for like 160 that are... That's actually a pretty good price for them. Yeah. I've seen them go upwards yeah. to 400 Unfortunately, I just spent a ton of money in Ikea. <laughs> So, uh, so it that won't, adult life that that uh, that uh, that adult life, um, but it won't be this month. But I am kind of 
hoping maybe uh, in a couple of months I might be able to get one and that would be my Christmas present to myself sort of thing cool hmm. awesome um, yeah so that's pretty much it and what else have I been doing or looking forward to doing I don't know Netflix a lot of Netflix there's some good Netflix stuff coming out mm. yeah Disenchantment was disappointing well I haven't um, finished watching that yet but I might do a review le- show and, mm, didn't mm. it just come out like three days ago yeah, yeah. it's interesting it's 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 different. It's different. It's not, and like, long it's, story short, I think it's like people, Matt, Matt Groening fans, are kind of going to be like, "This isn't like Simpsons and Futurama." I don't know if I like it or not. But in my opinion, oh. it, like I don't hate it. It's just not it's funny. It's got funny moments. It's got fu- like I I golfed a bit. Funny I was moments. like, mm, yeah. see the thing is, I saw the announcement like, of Final Space and then saw the announcement of Disenchantment. And I went, wait, wait a minute, aren't these like? Like I, I, when I first Final saw it, I thought is really good. Yeah. I What's Final it Space? Good. Final Space. It's a cartoon. It's a new cartoon style, irreverent comedy style thing. Family Guy it's, slash it's, space slash Rick and Morty slash. Really good. It's really fucking. Good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That. It's really fucking good. It's actually got some really heartfelt moments I didn't see coming in. Okay. Like, oh, so other Futurama. Very good. Kind of yeah, but of a weird. Imagine Futurama style kind of pacing with. Please tell not, me not Farscape Rick and, influences. Not I want Rick, some Farscape. Not, not Rick and Morty humor, but it's the same kind of irreverent, kind of like dark humor that Rick and Morty can go to. <laughs> it's not, it's not like Rick IQ, and Morty. I watch Rick. He, people keep talking about Rick and Morty, like comparing it, and I'm like, it's not like Rick and Morty, but it's dark. It, it veers into the kind of like, it's a little bit dark. <laughs> like that joke is kind of like, ooh. Okay. But it's, it's, very, it's very fucking good. Right. I would recommend that before I recommend Enchantment. Disenchantment. disenchantment. But so, so I, would you say that you're disenchanted with disenchantment? I am a little bit disenchanted. I, say, I need to give it a bit more of a go, though. I, would say, I, I did love in the opening I'm episode when the prince mistook the uh, narwhals for mermaids. That that made me laugh quite a bit. Historical a... accuracy, everyone. I, 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 one I, thing I, of your fictional medieval TV shows I, by the Simpsons creators. I was, they need to be historically accurate. I laughed my, quite a bit once I realized what was happening. Now, myself, I finally got the last pieces of what I need to rig up my N64 to be working in a capacity that I enjoy, because... Mm. I, RGB, you mean? Uh, RGB, power supply, EverDrive. Cool. So I've got, like, the, the Swift. So yeah. I'm on the hunt for good N64 games, which are Okay, few. I was going to say, there's about 30 of them. <laughs> like, like, no, no, no. There's a solid 10 you can get that are uh, good. Like, and ones, great, that, though. One, great. ones that I haven't played, so not Again, so much so as a suggestion as a hey, throw shit at me. Help Ben out in the comments. So is this, is this kind of like a like a um, I can't remember the name of the guy from The Simpsons, but he, he walks in, he's like walks into Cookie Mart, and he's like, "Hello, young man. I, I, along with the purchase of this beer, I would like three of your finest." Cheapest cigars. <laughs> I feel like that's what Ben's doing well, with N sixty four. I want three of your finest, cheapest. Shit is N64. Hey, I'll be honest. <laughs> like I said, I'm, I'm going to pirate them. N64 games are more expensive than like any other platform. That's true. You've got Never Drive. So. But yeah, so just like whoop. Right. Whoop. Well, uh, I think we'll wrap it up there. Thank you guys so much for sticking with us. Um, if you uh, are new to, ch- to the channel and this podcast, please consider subscribing. And also because we're not posting to schedule, it's probably a good idea if you click the bell notification as well. So you Ding. do actually get a little notification when we come out with new stuff. Um, uh, also, if you're listening to this uh, audibly through your ears, um, you can check us out uh, on uh, what is it on SoundCloud and iTunes. Well, if they're on SoundCloud and iTunes listening to us audibly, then, then you can leave a review if you could, because that would be really. How cool do you listen you. to things other than with your ears? I don't know. Maybe they use their touch fingers like they're some kind of alien. Maybe. Like in Titan, if you saw that on Netflix, that's not a good movie. If people, I saw that. If people are listening to us on SoundCloud and iTunes, we also have YouTube. We also have And YouTube. Discord. Join us on Discord. And yes, Discord. Um, if you are the, It will be in the description of the video. Um, there will be a link to the Discord, as well as everything else, our little sources and credits. Somehow you're worse at this than Benjamin. I know. <laughs> I'm not look, good at this. I, so I like, sh- share, subscribe, join Discord... Uh, if Review. you dislike the video, hit that button. Otherwise, hit like. So, yeah. All just good. thumbs down. Just thumbs down everything we do, please. Provide Just put us in the fucking grave, everyone. <laughs> Alright, so are we going to do an in loving memory of We Are Number One guy? Uh, yeah, and I think we should close out with um, 
no. No, no, not him. He's oh. not allowed to dance to this. This no. is sad. Yeah, uh, beloved actor Stefan Stefanovic, uh, who played Robbie Rotten in Lazy Town and is the, uh, I guess, not unwilling, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> unwilling willingly... star. No, like like he starred um, in uh, the meme, We Are Number One. Uh, like, yeah, unsuspecting star. Unsuspecting star is the word I was looking for. Uh, has unfortunately passed away um, and we send our condolences... I guess, yeah. um, to his, his and her, um, his cool dude. Yeah. He did. He was dude, a cool so. dude. And he, and he, he loved the memes. I think it's probably, he did. there was a, there was a, a fan of the memes. there was a live version of him and, and the other three guys, um, performing the, uh, the, the, the yeah, theme song one. live. Um, that's and, awesome. and you could just see the joy in his face. He, yeah. he, he loves it. So, yeah. um, big shout out to him and you should definitely check out you know, Lazy Town. Lazy Town's there. actually a really fucking great show. Yeah. Beside the memes, it's actually really cool. Yeah. Use it Good to entertain kids. small children. Yes. yes. If I catch you watching it just as an adult, I'll be like... like and don't it's watch, good, it's a good show. And don't watch just... Cooking by the Book featuring Little John with your headphones on loud. Oh, <laughs> or only Please with your subwoofer plugged in. Yeah. Cool. What? <laughs> yeah. Thanks, guys. Let's catch Bye. you later.